February 23rd, and we're in the sauna for the first time since we went to Essex. But I can tell you right now that it's hot in here. <laughs> it's very hot in here. My uh, Our water bottles, which are metal, but, well, two of them are metal, are almost too hot to touch. Mm -hmm. The chair, we have a um, low-slung uh, lawn chair in here set on one of the... Um, the benches in case somebody wants to support their back against something like that and it's metal it gets really really hot too i don't think kim and i could take it much hotter than it is could we no. right now and not staying here very long yeah that's about that's about the maximum if we want to stay in here for yeah for an hour like we like to it's hot <laughs> oh and welcome to victoria knits Well, we've established it's February 23rd. Um, tomorrow, I'm really looking forward to going on a hike, another hike with Janet, my friend Janet. We're going to a different place we haven't been to, and those are the kind of hikes that excite me the most. So let's see how that turns out. I forgot to say that if you want to look at how this sauna was built by my husband, Kim, you can look at the very beginning of episode 41, where I show that process. Also, I just want to say hi to all the um, new subscribers. Nice to have you along. I hope you find something you like here. See you up in the snow. It is snowing outside here as we uh, speak. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Janet and I just went to Stanton Lake and I would be podcasting there. But it is overclass, classed, overcast, cloudy and snowy there and very windy. So um, I didn't really feel like doing that. It would have been nice if it had been a clear day, but we will come back. We will come back. Um, we are in the Great Bear Wilderness area. That's where this lake is. And it's about a four mile round trip hike. I'm not sure where Stanton Lake got its name. It might have gotten it from Lottie Stanton. That's what Stanton Mountain is named after, who Stanton Mountain is named after, um, which overlooks Lake McDonald. And she was the wife of a livery stable keeper at Demersville in the late uh, 1800s. Okay, let's take a look at what I got done. I finished this pair of does this work? Okay. I finished, <laughs> I finished this pair of, uh, these are the Gypsophilia socks by Susan Hardy. And uh, they turned out really well. As you can see, they, as I said in my last podcast, I didn't get them matched up quite right. Those uh, 20, 20 gram minis, I didn't quite get them correctly. So I added a little to the top of this one. And I called it good. They'll go in my Christmas box of socks. They feel really good. I did a 60 stitch count on these. And frankly, I wish I would have gone down to uh, 56. There's not a lot of negative ease. There's not much. They fit They fit nicely. And they're they're nice. But I, I would have liked it if I would have gone down a little bit. Oh, and so I finished those. And I had to start another pair of socks, of course. These are the um, Sugar Frost socks. I can't pronounce the um, creator's name, so I'll put her name at the bottom. But aren't those lovely? It's a really, really simple pattern, and I feel like that's what I needed. It's a four row repeat, and it's a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away. But you knit three rows, and then you purl one. That simple. I love it. It makes this yarn, I think, really stand out nicely. And this is the yarn that Jan Swarbrick of Jan's Crafty Crochet, she dyed this herself and sent it to me for Christmas. I think it's just lovely. I really, really like it. The mini that I'm using for the heels, toes, and cuffs, I have no idea where I got that. But I went into my yarn stash and looked for something that would go along with this yarn, and that's what I found, and I really like it. So these are going to go into my Christmas box of socks also. I just really like these. I did uh, 
um, 56 stitches on a size one needle for these and they fit perfectly. I really like it. I was afraid they weren't gonna be stretchy enough, but they're perfect. They work just nice, just really well. Gosh, I love that color. Thank you, Jan. Really, really pretty. And what I've decided to do this year is, I've decided to mostly knit for my Christmas box of socks because I'd like to get up to 25 for that. So what I've done lately is I've started mending some old socks. And I can't tell you how satisfying that is. <laughs> Look at this. I will show you some, I think I have a before picture of this one. So that was a big long mess there. I will write down which um, podcast I used to uh, find the way to to repair these. And uh, it works it works out really nicely. Her explanation's great, her videos are great. And you know what? I have three extra pairs of socks now. <laughs> this one, I actually found the old yarn. The heel was actually made out of this uh, blue stuff like the heels, toes, and cuffs. I, di I, didn't, I didn't locate that, but I got this really sturdy yarn and did that heel. And then this heel didn't have a hole in it, but I thought, you know, it's super thin. It's going to go. So I just, I had a big hunk of this yarn left and I just did the heel in that. You know, she said in the video, oh, you should save pieces of your old socks so you can mend them with the same yarn. I really don't care. I don't care about that at all. Um, I just want these socks back. <laughs> I want to wear these socks again. And frankly, most of the socks I wear, I wear just around the house and I'm not going anywhere. Half the time, you know, about at least 50% of the time, I never leave the house. Thought I have to put on a pair of shoes. But when I do put on a pair of shoes, you will never see this. You will never see that little repair job. Now this one, oh yeah, there it is. I just found some blue that kind of went along with the sock. I think it looks fine. This heel was okay. I didn't have to fix that one. So, I have three more pairs of socks to put back in my sock drawer. I'm super excited about it. I should have done this a long, long time ago. <laughs> I'm glad I'm doing it now. <laughs> and so I will show you a bunch of pictures that uh, Janet and I took on the way. Um, it's been a great hike. It's been gorgeous out, as you will soon see. There was plenty of snow on the way to Stanton Lake. There's not much snow at our house right now, but that part of the state had received quite a bit. It's over near Essex, where we had gone before. Luckily, Janet and I usually plan for every contingency and we had both brought our snowshoes, which came in very handy during this hike. We needed them for the entire time. Snow is so beautiful. The lake itself is actually within the Great Bear Wilderness Area. The sign is always fun to see. Kind of means a big thing when you cross into that part of the, the forest. When we reached Stanton Lake, we were hoping for some clear skies, but we didn't get that. I wanted to show the peaks that surround the lake, but it was, um, there were some snow squalls going on and quite a bit of wind. It was still really pretty though.
Oh. All in all, it was a really good trip. We plan on going back and trying that uh, Grant Ridge Trail next time, see where that part of it might lead us. We would have missed the trailhead sign if we hadn't known where to look for it because the snowplow has been pushing up a bunch of snow against it. And there is a Stanton Creek Inn right there where we parked at. And to give you some perspective on where Stanton Lake is, you can see the yellow uh, line that is Highway 2. Across that is Glacier National Park. And then the black circle is where we live. And Stanton Lake is a 70 mile drive from our house. Hi, I gotta look and see what today is. Today is February 27th and I am on another hike. I have decided to um, do the reservoir trail hike today. It's part of the Whitefish Trail. And I'll talk about that, but first let's talk about some knitting while I'm out here. I have seen one other person and I've been breaking trail. So it's about time to turn around and go back. I just finished eating the sandwich I brought and I've come three miles up this trail. So I got, I have, you know, obviously three to go back. But I wanted to show you, I finished my Sugar Frost socks. These are by Marianne Heineken, Heineken, something like that. Oh, they're so pretty. Jan did such a great job on dyeing that yarn, didn't she? And I love the, the color I chose for the heels, toes, and cuffs. Yeah, I, um, I managed to knit these in a week. They went so fast. Uh, it's a really easy pattern. I really like it, though. I like the way it turned out. Yeah, Christmas box of socks, that's where these are going. And I, of course, started another pair of socks. These are the Triometry socks by Tracy Seamster. This is a paid pattern, but it came with my Knit Crate order one time. Um, let's talk about this. So these are supposed to be knitted on a size 2 needle, which I don't usually do. I prefer a size one and about 56 stitches for my socks as I've said before but these call for a size two needle and she wants you to cast on uh, their toe up but you eventually go up to 68 stitches on a size two that would be way too big for me so I went down to uh, 53 stitches, which I probably shouldn't have done because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the pattern. It's a 17, 17 stitch repeat pattern. I'm just going to do it down the front, I've decided. So that means I could have done these on a size one needle and uh, just figured out how many um, stitches I needed to, to uh, knit around it and keep just that 17. Anyway, they are going on size 2 needles, which seems seem really big once you've been knitting with size 1, don't they? To go up to size 2, wow, that seems huge. Anyway, I like the way they're turning out. Um, the yarn is, uh, the green yarn is Faux Fur by Hannah Made It. And she was having a sale on some uh, yarn, some Christmas yarn, so I got this. And then for my Malin tea, I had to order some more of that Tennessee Whiskey Colorway from Big Sky Yarn Co. And that's what the brown is. So it's going to be uh, heels, toes, and cuffs in that brown. 
I think I'm going to really like these. I think the pattern is going to uh, turn out really nicely with just the panel down the front. I think that's going to be plenty for me. So we'll see how those turn out. <laughs> it's getting cold out here. It was supposed to be sunny today. That's why I, um, I waited to do this walk until today. Does it look sunny to you? It's not. It's not sunny at all. <laughs> I find that kind of annoying. <laughs> I was ready for some uh, nice clear blue skies and I, I have not, not gotten it at all. So the last thing I brought with me is my um, Malin tea. And this is what I have on it. I finished the body. I can't step back too far because uh, I will uh, fall off this little hill. Or... It's, too, it's a little too big. It's a little too wide for me. I was a little disappointed when I tried it on. I thought I had the size right. But it's too, it's too wide. But you know what? I'm not taking all that out and I'm not giving it to anybody else. I've seen people wearing theirs and, um, and some of theirs look a little wide too. So that's what I'm just, you know, I'm just going to have to suck it up and go with it, right? I've put a lot of work into that shirt. <laughs> I am going to, yeah, it's just going to have to be what it is. So I have the sleeves to do. I ran out of this, uh, as I said, I ran out of the Tennessee whiskey just before I, uh, like I had two or three rolls to, to do on the ham there. And then I ran out of the Tennessee whiskey. So I went ahead and ordered another skein from Cassie at Big Sky Yarn Co. She's in Tennessee now. I, you know, I, what am I going to do? It, it's just going to be like a loose shirt, right? Maybe um, blocking will uh, work its magic. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, I wished it would have been a nicer, prettier hike. There were some pretty areas where I overlooked um, the town of Whitefish, and I'll show those to you. Uh, that was like just a mile and a half in to the hike. And I looked up some stuff about whitefish. It said, long before the first white man ever laid eyes on what Whitefish Lake, a handful of Native American tribes inhabited the area, most notably the Kootenai, the Ponderay, and the Bitterroot Salish. Archaeologists say that the Kootenai have lived in the area for more than 14,000 years, inhabiting the mountainous terrain west of the Continental Divide and traveling east of the Divide for occasional buffalo hunts. The Salish people occupied territory in Washington, Idaho, and western Montana and shared hunting and gathering grounds with the Kootenai and Ponderay tribes during the mid-1800s. In the mid-1850s, a group of trappers working the Flathead Valleys, rivers, lakes, and streams for beaver and other pelts came upon a group of Indians pulling a native fish species, whitefish, from a long, narrow lake. And suddenly, after tens of thousands of years, the lake had a name. <laughs> Whitefish started rather late in life, as far as towns go, while people had been living around the area of Whitefish prior to the arrival of the railroad, primarily um, doing logging. No official town existed, but in 1901, the Great Northern Railway announced it would build through what is now Whitefish and established a new division point. So over the next three years, clearing for a new town site was done and materials for the construction of the site flowed in. Whitefish was initially called Stump Town um, because the, the town was uh, heavily wooded and to make room for a town site, a huge number of trees were cut down, leaving stumps behind. These stumps created problems almost immediately in the form of creating traffic problems and making it a pain for new additional construction as all these stumps had to be painfully removed. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so you can still see a little bit of uh, the, the uh, references to Stump Town as you go through Whitefish, and I'll show you some of those. So I'm on the Reservoir Trailhead. It's just uh, two miles from downtown. 
It's the gateway to the Whitefish Trail in Haskell Basin. I was hoping to make it to the Haskell Lake Overlook, but I don't feel like breaking trail in this snow, especially since I'm the only one out here. Um, and it's not warming up. <laughs> Crazy, don't get me started on the weather. <laughs> but it's a, um, this, this trailhead was, it was the one that when Janet and I, and I'll put the episode down here, when we stopped, at the yarn shop, the uh, Old Sun uh, Old Sun yarn shop here in town in Whitefish, uh, the gal there recommended, this is the, the trail she recommended we take, but we drove up here, but the, uh, the road to the trailhead and the trailhead parking lot was completely um, snowed in and not plowed, so we, we didn't even attempt to drive in. But I figured today it would be, it would be easy to get to because we haven't had that much snow. And I was right. I managed to get here. It's been a nice hike. I've got at least, you know, a little over three miles to head back. And I'll show you, um, I'll show you the highlights of what I've seen. It's been pretty. It's, uh, sometimes you feel like you're really out in the woods here, but, um, and you are, but also in a sense you're not, because once in a while you can't see a house in the distance. <laughs> So I'll show you, as I said, I'll show you some of this hike too. So here's the trailhead. And uh, there's lots of info on that board, which is really nice. It wasn't too long before I got up into some decent snow. You can see Whitefish Lake just off in the distance there. It's really pretty. You can see the town of Whitefish in the distance. Eventually uh, stopped at this point because you couldn't really um, see much of the trail anymore or tell where it was. Nobody had been on it, and I it really required snowshoes from this point on. So I gave it up and did my podcasting here. Well, I have one and a half miles to go. I'm halfway back. There's a lot of hills on this trail, which translates to a good workout. You can see a little bit of Whitefish Lake behind me, not a lot, and I guess, uh, what, is that the sun they're talking about today? <laughs> That's as uh, sunny as it's been. I'm almost, I'm almost back to the trailhead, which will be good. I bring two bottles of water with me. I brought a small, um, tripod to put my iPad on, brought the iPad, brought knitting, brought a sandwich, brought some extra granola bars, that kind of thing. My wallet in case I crash and die so somebody can recognize me. 
car keys, all that stuff has to go in the pack. So yeah, sometimes it seems like it's quite a bit to carry, but it's necessary. <laughs> well, I'm about to head back to the car. I stopped up here and uh, had the rest of my half, um, the rest of the sandwich. I had saved half of my sandwich and some water. Thank goodness I brought two bottles of water because I really needed it. And then I've been watching these three mule deer that are uh, right behind me somewhere. So that's been kind of fun. And I was thinking about my Malin tea on the way back. And maybe I can just make it a boxy, right? Boxies have never appealed to me, but that might be what the Malin, my Malin tea will turn out to be. And that's, it'll be okay. So these are the deer I saw. They were a ways away, but uh, managed to get some decent shots of them. These are mule deer. They are not the normal white-tailed deer we see around here all the time. So you'll see the white tail on the left, the mule deer on the right. Very different look. And their faces are very different too. White tail on the left, mule deer on the right. Quite different. There we go. And then Nico helped me wind up some yarn for the first time and I think he really enjoyed it. Good job, Nico. Good job. Is that fun? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of awkward doing it left handed, isn't it, buddy? Yeah. You being a right hander. Yeah. And me being a right hander. That's tough. And Janet and I took an ice fishing class through the BOW program, the Becoming an Outdoors Woman program. First, there was a Friday night class where they taught us all kinds of, of information and everything you would want to know. The next morning, we met on a pond and they brought all the equipment. We just had to dress warmly and uh, bring something to sit on. They had all the bait, they had the fishing poles. They had lots of help to show you how to do it. And uh, one of the most fun things they did was um, dig the ice holes. The ice was only about two inches thick, which is about the minimum you can do. Two inches is about the minimum depth for safety so you don't fall through. Janet had on this great hat she made, which was so appropriate to the occasion. It's called the Fish Hat by Thelma Egberts. I thought it was really, really cute. <laughs> and yes, Janet did eventually catch a fish which she had to uh, throw back in because it was just catch and release that day. We didn't even need to have uh, fishing licenses for this event. It was really nice in that way. I enjoyed it, so Janet. But it was very cold out on that pond, I'll tell you that. Speaking of cold, on March 13th, we had quite the storm come in. It brought us some more snow and a lot of wind. <laughs>
Hi, everybody. <laughs> Russell has agreed to be on uh, the podcast. Thank you, Russell. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And <laughs> Russell, uh, let's see, this last weekend, it's been snowy and cold, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been pretty cold. Um, got quite cold. It was cold again this morning. But we're supposed to get up Hi. into about 40. Yeah, Nico. So I wanted to show the sweater. I made for Russell. Do you like it? Russell, do you like that sweater? <laughs> this was called the T-shirt vest by Kylie Bates. I used this um, oh. mosaic insert. This is from uh, the Camden hat pattern by Tracy Davidson. I just thought it would add a little bit of interest to his sweater. I The black yarn is Knit Picks. <laughs> Oh yeah, just a minute, we'll show that. This yarn, um, I held double. One, The purple one I dyed with um, blueberries. And the coral looking one I dyed with beets. Hey. You like this sweater? sweater? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Oh, you want to show them the fish hat. So you saw, you saw um, Janet's fish hat. Well, I decided I needed to make one for myself. And your My hat too, hat. yeah, and your dinosaur hat. <laughs> so there's my version of the fish hat. Ah, <laughs> uh, what? What are you here? <laughs> Where'd everybody go? Where'd everybody go? Uh, you like your hat? Yeah. You need to turn it up a little bit uh, and do. Whoops, sorry. Do this uh, with it. Uh, this is. Where are you here? Where did everybody go? And yeah. Nico, you want your hat on? Yeah. What is it, Nico? It's people. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, you want to show everybody your hat? <laughs> we have two dinosaur hats and a fish hat. I decided to make mine um, not a dead one, so it's live. <laughs> you like that, Nico? Yeah. So, um, gosh, I did not write down, whoops, whoops, you're okay. I did not write down the uh, fish hat pattern, but I will put it across the bottom. It's really, really simple, and it's a great way to use up leftover yarn. And I knit it in uh, two days. Super, super simple. I did this, I think the pattern I think the pattern calls for a size 7 needle and I did mine on a 6 because I was using Karen yarn which as we know is not really worsted weight. You like it? Yeah. You like the eyes? You like the tail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try it on? See if it fits you? Okay, let's try that on. Uh, <laughs> it might. It's supposed to fit child and adult, but it's a little loose for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm like, the fish hat? Baba. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to try your sweater on so they can see that? No? <laughs> Just your hat? The hat is uh, the pattern Easy Dinosaur Spikes by Rachel Binion. Um, I'll link to that below, just as I'll link to everything else. It is a free uh, pattern. Put it in here. And actually the pattern is just for the uh, spikes. You knit your own little, no. you can knit your own little beanie hat from anywhere and then just, no. just add this. <laughs> craziness going yeah, on here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Nico too. So Russell's been sick, haven't you? Yeah, he hasn't been feeling good, but you're getting better. He had croup, which we had never experienced before. Um, not as bad as it sounds, but you know, it has a possibility. 
But he's getting better, huh? You feeling better? Yeah. We had a lot of snow, didn't we? And we went into the sauna with your mom and dad Friday night. That was nice. They yeah. didn't like it. They didn't like it? Oh, you uh, didn't like it. Was it too hot? Yeah. Ah. But maybe today we can get outside and uh, play in the snow. What I haven't mentioned is I am wearing my Malin by Cecilia Lozada. Yeah. There's the sleeves. I finally finished this. It fits. I'll insert to pick a better picture of me in it. Um, the brown is Tennessee Whiskey um, by Big Sky, Yarn, Big Sky Yarn Co. And the blue is Lakeville by Juniper Moon Farm. Yay! This light blue I got from uh, Teal Torch Knits. It's called Miss Marple. Shirt. Yeah, what, what do you have on? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. So this shirt turned out not near as loose as, uh, as big as I thought it was going to be. It actually fits just fine. It's roomy, but it feels really good. So you like your dino hat? Yeah, it's pretty nice, huh? You like your fish you hat? Yes, I do like my fish hat. I like my fish hat quite a bit because I look like a fish. Do I look like a fish? I'm gonna wear it. Okay, you can. And I look like a fish. <laughs> you look just like a fish. Look at you. Yeah. Big. <laughs> I, I a fish. Hello. <laughs> so as you can tell, I have been uh, getting some knitting done. It's been nice. Alright, can you say bye everybody? Bye everybody. Thanks for watching. It's a fish hat. It's a fish hat. Thanks for watching. Bye. 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 You want to say bye bye? Come here. Bink. Yeah, I'll get your bink. Bye Here's bye. Your bink. Yeah. Come here. Wanna say, whoa. Wanna say bye bye? Oh. Yeah, there you go. Bye. bye. Get in on this action. You say bye bye? Bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. Good. Okay. Hi, Janet and I are at on another uh, whitefish trail. We went to the Big Mountain Trailhead today and it's a beautiful day out although it's a little windy so um, I'll try to protect my microphone a little bit from that it's been a good hike it's been a shorter hike but it's plenty right now I wanted to show you the triometry socks I finished um, got this pair done these will go into my Christmas box of socks I like them let's see one of them I have not um, blocked but you know i don't normally block my socks anyway because they are knit to fit my feet so who cares anyway um i like these this was uh holy cow hang on victoria this was um <laughs> this was a knit crate pattern <laughs> and the yarn is uh the green yarn is faux fur from hannah made it and the brown yarn is uh um, Tennessee Whiskey by Big Sky Yarn Co. I think they're great. They'll be great for my box box of Christmas socks. Pretty happy about those. I have been doing some more sock mending. <laughs> Three more pairs have been repaired. I'm pretty excited about it. These will be added to my sock drawer. You can see the little mending on there. This one just needed it there. And I forgot to mention I'm using this wonderful egg darner I got from my friend Linda. Hi, Linda, on Joey Scarf Podcast. She sent this to me for nothing, just because she had a bunch and she was giving them away. She said, who wants one? And something like this comes in really handy to darn your socks. So you can stick it up into that heel and you're not picking up the other side of your sock as you're, you're uh, fixing it. Yeah. So I needed to mention that. I'm really glad I have that. 
All right. All right, we're running. Okay, cool. Get me untangled a little bit. Oh, so I'll show you um, so the highlights from the hike we took. When we stopped for lunch, Janet spotted this little rabbit, and I thought it was so cute. I really enjoyed seeing that. Um, yeah, you probably don't know this, but Janet does. I'm always looking for a moose out here or something exciting, but I'll take a rabbit when I get it. I wonder if Alice in Wonderland is around. <laughs> We did make it to the Haskell Lake Overlook, or actually just to Haskell Lake, frankly. And that's where I was trying to get when I took that hike by myself from the reservoir trailhood, but trailhood, trailhead, but couldn't, couldn't quite make it. But we made it there today. It was a lot closer from this end of the trail. And we've seen just a couple other people on this trail. Um, yeah, it's been really nice. I, I will, uh, wanted, to, wanted to let you know I have finally done a yoga class with my daughter. She's, uh, she was doing them at the uh, rec center here and Janet came out and took a class um, with me and it was really fun. I won't show you any pictures of that class because I've already shown you pictures of what she teaches. But uh, yeah, it was pretty nice. Does it seem to be going okay? Okay. Um, also, we are finally getting duck eggs from the ducklings. So uh, we got our first four egg day. That means one from Marion, the mother duck, one from Rose, one from Lilia, and one from Phoebe. So we are up to getting, uh, having the possibility of four duck eggs a day, and that's really nice. They seem to be doing really well. Although later on in the podcast, you will see um, some arguing between uh, Freezy and Konkadunk. <laughs> we'll save that for later. Podcasts I've been watching, um, Needles at the Ready with Kevin and Ray. And I think part of what's uh, so entertaining about them is just their enthusiasm. When you see new knitters, <laughs> fairly new knitters, they're just going gaga over the yarn, over the patterns. It's really fun to watch. So I've been enjoying them. On TV, I have been watching uh, Lock and Key on Netflix. I don't know if anybody else has been watching that. It only has one season. But if you are a um, fan of Stranger Things, I'm sure you'll like Lock and Key. And then uh, after that, I was looking for something else because I've been watching way too much TV. And I started watching The Stranger on Netflix. That only has one season also. Be nice if it had another. And after that, I switched to Janet King on Acorn TV. I really have been enjoying that. Um, she's kind of a, um, you kind of love hater, but it's a pretty good show. I did want to talk, I did want to talk about one thing I ordered off of Etsy, and that is, uh, this is one of them, these little lavender sachets. 
I got 18 of these for $20 or $19.99 and it was free shipping. Here comes that wind again. And it was uh, from uh, the gal is, lives in Hamilton, Montana. That's what I've been smelling. Yeah, it's, it's they're delicious. <laughs> I have stuck these into all my uh, yarn and my drawers. I love them. I definitely recommend you go check her out. And I will link to her and everything else below. These, these have been really great. When we passed that woman with the dog, I thought it was her perfume. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wanted to do um, continue with that Guernsey calendar uh, for my way, way, way off the porch segment. Uh, this month is uh, Petite Bow. Petite Bow is a real bucket and spade, traditional beach, but without the crowds. Set between two wooded valleys, the surrounding cliffs provide a little shelter and frame the beautiful views out to sea. Yeah, I wouldn't mind being there. That looks really nice. So I don't know about all you guys, but um, I've certainly been feeling some stress over the situation we've got going on here in the States and really all across the world. Um, I know I've been doing, you know, I'd like to say I've been handling it really well and taking advantage of all the time at home, but I'm retired, so I have time at home. What I have been doing is stress eating, and that's not great, and not getting enough exercise. So I'm just telling you that to admit where I'm at and that uh, those are two areas I really need to start watching. And so I will uh, make an attempt to do that. Um, David at that raptitude.com podcast that I, or uh, blog that I've talked about before, he put out a, a new blog post and I'll just read you um, a short part of it. I recommend you go over and read the rest of it. <clears throat> he says, I'm not sure what last week was like for you, but I'm guessing it felt different from the week before. You may have experienced major changes in your work situation, your finances, your childcare scheme, your pantry inventory, your world view, your hand washing technique, your vacation plans, and your feelings toward doorknobs. What seemed rele relevant then may not now and vice versa. I don't believe I heard a single mention of the U.S. election for an entire week, which was surreal. Only six days ago, I was quite interested in the results of certain NHL games. Now that feels like a memory from childhood, and there are no NHL games anyway. Also, over a 48-hour span, the topic I was going to post on Raptitude started to seem a little out of touch then became completely inappropriate, which was the joys of connecting with strangers in public places. I do think staying close to our fellow humans is a vital aspect of global well-being right now, but we don't want to connect in ways that allows our germs to connect as well. Depending on where you live, you may have been asked or ordered not to shake hands, high five, shop, dine out, hug, lift weights, throw a party, give a speech, or dance anywhere but in your apartment. He goes on in that blog post and he talks a lot about what's going on with everybody, but what I really enjoyed was he asked everybody who was reading that post three questions. And his questions were, <clears throat> Who are you? Who is the person reading this blog? Looking up from the screen before you, what's happening around you in this room and in your community? And how are you doing? I thought those were really, really good questions. And he's had over 300 comments on that blog post. And I'll tell you what's fun is to go through and read them and see uh, where people are at around the world and how they're dealing with it. And it just, it made me feel more connected and it might help you feel more connected too. If you want, uh, I would recommend you go over and read some of those. You could also just put comments down below this YouTube video and tell me how you're doing. You could answer those questions or say anything you want. If you're sick and tired of hearing about this virus, that's okay too. I totally get that. But Janet and I are on our way back to the trailhead now and uh, Oh, here comes a dog and uh, some hikers that we haven't seen before. Nice. Hi, bud. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, hi. 
<laughs> Hi. <laughs> At least he's friendly. <laughs> didn't run away with anything. Yeah. So we are going to head back, and um, I'm going to say goodbye from Northwest Montana. There is an off, off the porch segment this time, so I hope you enjoy that, and I hope I see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hi, Nika. Hi, Nika. Oh, no, you okay? Yeah. <laughs>